I'm going to close it up and let me show you what we're going to work on. So in Fidel, here you're seeing the underworld hub level. Here you can pick where to go next. You can play the regular game if you go through that gate. Or you can go to the puzzle world or the speed run or the city uh, pit world, uh, which is sort of a puzzle thing in the game. Or you can jump into the underworld, which is like the final section of the game. And uh, each one of these worlds is a progression of procedurally generated levels. So for instance, just, I'm just skipping ahead to the next level. And here you can see this level that has these weird turtles in it. Uh, that, has a, that have a not behavior. Not the same as the regular turtles. And then after at least this level, you get the first boss and then more procedurally generated levels. In this case, these are bonus levels. Uh, so let's see how this actually works from the perspective of a game. Here I'm in a, in a file called campaign, which stores all the levels in the game and you know it gives them this, the, 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 the structure. And here you can see, this is, these are the regular levels, the one that you play when you start playing the game. And this is the underworld section, where the games uh, with levels that are going to be in the underworld section are going to be. As you can see, it starts on the, on the sewer, on the hub world. And then it picks out uh, one of two options. We one is the Fanatics and Spikes variant of the first level, and the other one is the Spider Captain level. Let me see if I can show you the Captain level uh, thing. This is the other variant of the level. It has this kind of monster that is new that you haven't seen before, and it's only on this world. But uh, in the end, you only have two different kinds of levels that you can bump into in the first level. Then after after this one, there comes the turtle level that is shown, uh, that I just shown, and then you know the first boss. So I was thinking that maybe we could do something to uh, add a bit more variety to the game, and maybe we could try to design a new level uh, to choose from uh, as a second level in the underworld. Let me see if everything is right. Uh, all right, everything's good, so let's get going. So one of the things that I was thinking about for this level is this scene from Indiana Jones, in which he approaches the golden idol and when he does grab it, He thinks everything is fine, but then, you know, everything goes to hell. Things start shooting off. Then there's there's a pit. And a closing door. And then a boulder. And right in the final sequence, a chase from the natives. And he escapes. So I was thinking maybe we could uh, do something like this in the game uh, that has this sort of uh, sort of tension. Maybe maybe we can try to do something about that. So first of all, let's make an empty level for us to work on. So let's grab the turtle level, duplicate it, and I'm going to show you how this actually works. So how about we make an underworld idle level or something. Okay, as you can see, this is this is how things are set up in the game. This is how levels are defined in Fidel. First of all, I'm setting up, you know, basic stuff like what is going to be the background image of level. 
there's a sort of filter in front of every level that is called an overlay and uh, here I'm choosing which one of these is going to be you can see the backgrounds uh, here like stuff like this or like this one or like this one uh, there are several backgrounds so in this in this part I'm just defining that I'm telling it how to group monsters together because the spiders tends to uh, like to be uh, grouped uh, uh, in, in groups of three, four, or two, or something like that. Here you can set up that number. What the color of the shadow of things is going to be, what this debris on the floor, there's a bunch of stuff like being defined here. It's mostly cosmetic or you know very basic stuff, very basic structure about the levels. And then after setting that up, I can either add fix elements to the game, in which here you can see like the this is the the blue turtles in the middle in, in the middle i'm just placing them so they're always fixed they always show up in the same spots and then i add a bunch of uh different kind of things randomly this means that an algorithm is going to pick these numbers up and start placing stuff with uh some criteria you can see some of it uh here when i'm choosing how to place spiders you know they try to have a minimum distance between each other unless they're on the same group and they don't want to be bunched up. They try to do a bunch of things when they're being placed. But uh, when you're designing uh, levels, you don't need to worry about any of that. You only need to uh, tell me, uh, tell the game which fixed objects are going to be there and which ones, how many random items are going to be there. And then the game picks it up and start, you know, deciding where things go. So in this case, this is a turtle kind of uh, level, uh, but we don't care about any of that. Uh, we do want some automatic medikits, and we probably want a gem because the underworld has gems in it, and they are important to the final boss. So uh, you do want to have at least a gem per level or something like that. Um, so let's add this level into the wheel. Uh, we're going to cheat a bit and when we're going to add this level force this level to be uh the first level so we don't need to uh start you know skipping levels when we're playing so i'm going to do this i mean i'll do all part let's see if this does what it's supposed to do okay we have an empty level. We have one of these chests. We don't want this chest in this level probably, so we are going to remove it. Uh, also, I think these gates on the sides, maybe they don't work as well for this level, so we, I'm going to try to move them on the bottom part of the, of the level. Let's do that. So, this is a parameter. No, do not include a super mimic. Do not have an XP gate. Do not place the gates because I'm going to place them. Do not have any thorns. Uh, and now let's see. Let's add gates. A couple of fixed gates in the game. So the gates, we want them at uh, probably like in the center. I want them to be almost right next to each other. Let's see if that works out. Maybe maybe it's this is not good, a good idea, but let's try anyway. So what I'm doing here is I want one to the left of the center and one to the right of the center. Let's see what this level looks like now. All right, this looks more like it. Um, there's only one medikit, the game is deciding that there's going to be only one medikit because there are no monsters in the level, so not much to heal in this case let's see, is everything fine here? Uh, okay so now I think in level that is like Indiana Jones' idle section, we are going to need 
a bunch of uh, cultists or fanatics. Uh, how about we add a ton of them? How about we add like I don't know, say like 15 or something? Maybe that's too much. Uh, we should add a few spiders because you know there were spiders in that in that part of the movie, so we are going to need a few spiders. Uh, let's add I don't know, like 10 spiders or something. Right now, I'm just I'm just going to throw out stuff uh, to see how it how it looks and it, how it feels. Okay, I think there's too many fanatics and there's too few spiders in this in this level. Uh, it also doesn't look very nice, mostly because uh, there's no anchor, there's no visual anchor. I mean, it's just a bunch of stuff randomly thrown together into into the level, so this is not going to feel very good. Uh, So we need to do something about that as well. But let's try to get numbers right first. Maybe we need more spiders, like maybe 15 spiders, maybe low, just 10 fanatics. Uh, let's add the automatic medic at the end, so we can, it's where the monsters have happened. All right. I mean, this still feels crowded, a bit crowded, but at least uh, I think we can add, we can add a, now there, I think one extra fanatic here, uh, and maybe, no, I think one extra fanatic, oh wait, I have an idea, we, we can, okay, we can, we can add, add, add another use element in this section of the game, which are uh, the spike traps. Uh, um, let's add a bunch of them because you know in the Indiana Jones section there were traps, so we need traps too. Um, uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm going to do it in a non-fancy way. Uh, let's see, where do we want them? Maybe. I mean, I think they should be annoying. Okay, wait. Uh, okay, I uh, I know exactly. I know exactly what we're going to do now. Uh, before putting up, uh, setting up the traps, let's uh, you know add the idol. I ask uh, Jeremias, the artist of this game, which is awesome. He's awesome. He uh, made us a few assets to work with. Um, how about that? This is new, you've never seen that, it's not in the game. Uh, these are the fanatics without the, the mask. So, uh, here's a pedestal and here's what we're going to use as the idol. This is the shadow for the pedestal. So we're going to add, add those these graphics into the game now. Uh, we're going to add these into the game right now so we can start using them so you get to see the whole thing so first of all i mean the the image is already being loaded but we need uh the game uh, the the game graphics is split into uh strips of animation like they're illogically together like some monster waking up or dying or an explosion those are just uh individual animations as you can see in a single image there can be multiple kinds of animation so we need to uh, uh, declare that now. Uh, so this is a fanatic uh, without mask idle animation. And uh, we're going to add the idle pedestal. Uh, and Uh, okay, let's see if we don't have a glitch in there. Okay, so now I, I only declare them. Now we need to tell the game where to load those these from. Uh, 
here I am adding the individual strips so for the fur with the fanatic without the mask we have uh, 10 20 30 40 this is 40 and it has uh, uh, like 20 18 frames uh, there is an offset here, so maybe we want to use that as well. This is a pivot point of the frames. Uh, we're not going to screw with the speed of the animation because we don't know yet. And then we add the pedestal, which is 50-60. Uh, uh, the 60, the first one. Uh, the idle is 61. It is wrong. This number tells you how many frames there are in the animation. These are single frame things. So, and I forgot to add the shadow for the pedestal, which is this this thing here, these things over here. So, and that's uh, um, um, 15, uh, 59. Let's do 59. Okay, is this right? Did I screw up? Yeah, it screwed up. So, oh yeah, I forgot to add this. We need to declare the shadow now. Okay. So now we can use those. Uh, we can use those animations. Okay. Uh, so in order to use those animations, we need to create a logical object. You know, we need to make the idol be smart enough to do something when you grab it. So I have a, a thing called actors, which are game objects in Unity terms, uh, which you know are just things that you interact with. So now we have the golden mask idol. And we have uh, also the idol, the golden, well, the idol pedestal. OK. Now I'm going to wait until Haxi complains about me not covering it, all the switch cases. This is a wonderful feature of this language that I wish more uh, language uh, languages had it, uh, like, you know, C++. Um, so in this case, what I'm doing is that I am forced to define an update method for these uh, elements in order to set up, you know, animations and you know basic logical stuff. This is here is where I tell the game, what the animations of this game are. So in this case, it's uh, idle, 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 um, and the pedestal. But also the pedestal has uh, a shadow. So let's configure the shadow for this thing. Okay, so now we can place this thing. It's not going to do anything because it's, uh, I mean, we're not doing anything with it. We, but we can already place it. Let's place it. Let's place it at the top of level to make it interesting. Uh, Let's place the pedestal at the center of the level, at the top, and the idle. Well, okay. So I tried to be too fancy. Now I don't remember the name. So let's call it idle. Screw it. Like I think I tried to make an idle of something at some point. So maybe I'm going to get a clash somewhere. We'll see. No, we're fine. Okay, so we add the idol and we add the pedestal. Let's let's see what these do. I know it's going to happen, but let me show you. Okay, 
Yeah, exactly what I expected happen. Uh, what's going on is that the mask. Uh, I don't. I'm not defining any depth ordering for these things, so I need to do that in order for the mask to be on top of the pedestal. So let's go do that. Let's go do that. Okay. Uh, I mean the pedestal is probably on the ground, and the idol is. Just you know, a short kind of actor. Okay, it can just lie there. Let's see what this looks. Like. Okay, so this looks fine. I mean, it's a bit disappointing that it's right on the top of level, which feels like it's it's very far. Uh, but. I mean, we're fine. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Right now, I just step on it because, you know, uh, who cares? I didn't do anything about the, the logic. And another thing, I think they're too, it's too high. Maybe the, we, we don't want to, we don't want it to be too high. Uh, let's, let's configure the offsets. The pivot point for this. Yeah, I don't use that. Just use the default. So the the tiles are better centered, and uh, let's do some logic now. What happens if you step on the idle or the pedestal? Interact is our function. Interact is a sort of collision logic uh, for uh, when Fidel steps into the tile where this object is. So what we want about the idol is for it to go away. I mean, you grabbed it. We're going to worry about, you know, feedback later. And the pedestal should also be destroyed because, you know, it's a pedestal and you destroyed it and now you trigger a lot of traps. But let's add some feedback to this. How about we add uh, an explosion? Uh, let's have some particles and my position uh, Let's use the gnome throne explosion logic Okay, let's see what this does These explodes again or not or maybe it just maybe it just works sometimes things just work Without struggling Okay well, that's, I mean, it work. It's kind of boring and because there's no sound and the mask is all wrong place on the pedestal because the pedestal is too high. We need to lower that. We're going to fix that now. Oh, wait, it's because I only, I only displays the shadow, not the actual pedestal. That's what I did wrong there. Okay, now this is going to be right. Let's add some sound so it's it's not so so boring. Uh, ah. Uh, how about well, let's put an explosion for now. Maybe maybe. Uh, uh, is there a sound for a gnome? No. So let's use an explosion, regular explosion. I am the emitter. Um, and also, well, let's do that afterwards. Let's see if this worked. Okay. I mean, it's a bit lackluster feedback, but at least we get something now. See if everything is going on, if everything is fine, okay. Uh, all right, so the next thing we need to do is to uh, is to do make the mask do, do something, anything. So the first thing that we'll try is just to wake up all the fanatics. Um, 
So let's iterate over all the actors. All the living actors. I want to get all the living actors. Let's wake them up if they're fanatics. Okay. Uh, also, we need to get a benefit out of the mask. So how about it gives you six gold, which is a lot, uh, and a bunch of XP. 15. How about that? Let's let the player know that we are giving him a bunch of XP. Um, let's see what this does. Okay, this woke up all the fanatics, but they were they just went by right back to sleep. This happened because uh, yeah, this this one is this one is sort of glitching. I wonder what's going on there. Okay, that, this is happening because this is not the way to do it. Because this interact is happening in the middle of an update. So what we're going to do instead of this, instead of, of all this, is just to add an event that tells, that says, uh, uh, game event type. Okay. Uh, I was checking. I was checking this, so um, I already added this event. It was making sure I could do that. I haven't touched that subsystem in a while. So now I'm adding a simple event, which is it's saying it's a global event that says, "Okay, this happened. Someone snatched the fanatic idol." So uh, what we're going to do is react on the side of the fanatics. Here they're iterating over all, all the events and saying, well, if I heard a noise and it happened right next to me, wake up. But now if an event happened, oh, wait, wait, this is there already. Okay, this is good. This is good. Uh, let's see. I mean, this should wake them up properly, maybe, let's hope. Okay, now they are all, all, all woken up. The thing is, since, they are, uh, since there's no logic for them to stay awake, they just go back to sleep, which makes the idol not really a very big problem. It's kind of boring, so... Uh, Let's make it so when this happens, they never go back to sleep again. Uh, serious, seriously startled. So now they are seriously startled. Um, So if it's if he's startled and asleep, then we wake him up. If he's not startled and he's not asleep, he goes back to sleep. So we he never uh, never goes back to sleep if he's seriously startled. So let's see if this keeps the fanatic awake. Well, no. 
he went right back to sleep what happened here he woke up he's not seriously startled if he's not startled and he's not asleep he's awake but he's not seriously startled what happened here why is it not working? This is weird. Are we compiling properly? You know, sometimes it fails silently and lets me run the game even though it doesn't compile. Okay. Uh Oh wait, wait! This is a problem. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is a problem. I mean, I'm I'm checking if the event happened this turn, but once it happened, I want I wanted to always uh, remember that that the, the idol was snatched. So yeah, so they stay awake, which is fine, but uh, we also want to use a new animation when this happened. So, uh, let's make a special case here, probably. Seriously startled. Um, and then we change, wait. We probably don't want to do this. So we need to, s we, need, we will need to store that this transformation happened. So I'm going, I'm here in the game object class and I'm going to use as a rewindable, I'm going to define a new property, which is fanatic. Uh, um, lost mask. And we declare it. Starts in false. And it's a rewound viral. Okay. So what we do here is say, well, if this happens, instead of saying seriously started, if this happened, wait, this is a proper way to do it. If I am seriously startled and I haven't lost my mask yet, then we uh reset all my animations and now uh reset all my animations should i play a sound probably not uh here i should wake up the fanatic as well I mean, don't give any feedback, we don't care about that because we're going to override the animation anyway. So if the fanatic lost his mask, let's configure the animation to have the new fanatic without mask idle. Okay, uh, where is the shadow of this thing set? Where is the shadow? Where is the shadow? Oh, here it is. Okay, so it's fine. Uh, this is fine. Well, that didn't work out. That did not work. Well, didn't it work? Uh, is it even coming into this place? No, it's not. Oh, because I'm not setting it. Genius. I am a genius. Right. Look at these guys. They're, they're angry. 
Okay, but the transformation is not working out very well. So let's add something to, let's do something dramatic. Like, they lose their mask. In a wondrous explosion of mask pieces. Okay, that's much better, but they're all in sync, which feels kind of wrong that they're all in sync. Let's desync, try to desync the animations so they don't do that. I don't remember exactly how this was done. It's like this. I think it is this one. Okay, here we go. Now it looks a lot. This looks like a mess. That's fine. We wanted that. But I am not satisfied because we also need we also need traps. So we're going to add traps. Let's add some traps. Wait, where where should we put the traps? I think we, we need to shuffle things around a bit here because uh, that ghost I should have killed the ghost before coming here see how easy I get rid of the ghost ghost you guys have to deal with the ghost all the time and just click a thing um, so this is a triangle so you probably can you know just do this and go right back out and, you know just go around a bit and then come back out which feels a bit unsatisfying and also I don't want the mask to be so far up uh, I, I'd rather it be here because it's easier to see and it, uh, no, it just, it, ju it would just feel better. So I'm thinking about changing the gates onto the sides. Maybe I can, I can move the gates on each one of the corners. So y you need to, you know, draw more dis distance in order to get to the, to the mask. You have to do this, which maybe feels better. Let's do that uh, and lower the mask a bit. Um, so the idol is on the second row and the gates are on the far ends of the level. But also now we need to decide where the traps are going to be. We need traps. Where are the traps? How about we put one here, here, here. I don't want I don't I don't like it when the traps are too close together. How about one here, like Indiana Jones on the sides, like one here, another here, another here, another here, another here, another here. How about that? It probably look good. I mean, I don't know how it's going to play, but it's going to look good. It's going to be fine. So if since my brain is occupied into let let's see if everything is right. I'm still online or something. Okay. Um, so, uh, instead, I, I mean, if, if my brain wasn't busy trying to talk at the same time as I'm thinking, I would do something more fancy. So you're going to forgive me for just hard coding the positions here, the traps. I don't even remember if they were called like this. So, uh, this is like... Uh, two and one and three and five and then now the right side uh, which is like uh, it's like four like one two three four okay see that was fast that was fast 30 is fast. Is there anything else we want to do before moving forward? I don't think I like the pedestal exploding actually. I mean, it's not going to look very good. Uh, I, I think I'm going to stop exploding it. It just doesn't feel very good. 
so yeah we're, we're going to stop exploding pedestal uh, no more particles please do not lead it however and no explosion however how about we add a rumble rumble rumbling rumble uh, how did i add a rumble sound i forgot how to do that uh who else did this let's see is there a rumble anywhere oh start rumble oh do i need to stop it Am I really going to need to stop it? No, wait, it's just a, it's just a freaking screen shake. Wait, yeah, I, I can start it, but I don't need to stop it. This, this is old code. This is very old code. Uh, if I'm doing this, why do... Okay, anyway, I don't care. It should be short though. Like, well, this is short. Let's make it shorter. There should also be a sound. Let's play an ambient sound called Fanatic Wake Up thing. So, so they make a sound when they wake up. Well, I should check if there are any fanatic. Anyway, I, we're just only going to use these here, so it doesn't matter. Okay, now these look busy. Let's let's reduce the number of spiders here. Uh, we have a bunch of stuff in this game. Um, let's see, how about this? And we add a couple more fanatics. Okay, now it feels empty. Fanatic have have this this tendency to like to group together in group of two. Maybe for this level, I should tell them not to do this. To try to stay far from each other because they make these barriers. Uh, also, it feels sort of empty in the middle, right? Like it's as, as if we're missing something there okay that rumble didn't work out really well. also the traps okay the traps start on but i think they should be off and they should be yes let's turn it off uh uh what was this i haven't touched these spikes in like forever wait no this is not this is not right uh how does a gnome do it so it's a spike floor that's fine should it be deactivated i don't i don't remember how these work guys uh Active broken, so I guess, so I guess this is this is all right. Okay, so they can be deactivated. Okay, let's let's do that. Let's just say they are these deactivated or something. So they start off. Yeah, whatever. I don't care about these things. I don't care about stupid imports. Let's see, so they start off. You can walk on top of them. And then they, everything goes to hell. Uh, but the trap is still closed. So what we do is when you grab the idol, we also uh, start. 
You also should start traps. <laughs> let's use wait. Let's use this event. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, update actor. I need to go to update actor and then find the spike floor. And if it's deactivated, so what we do is we iterate on the events. And if we find an event of type snatch fanatic idol. Uh, um, wait, if I am, if my spike state is deactivated, then check if the, it happened in this run that, in this level, that the idol will snatch and open up, open spike trap, toggle spike trap, what was this? Uh, trigger spike floor. I wonder what trigger does. Does it open up? It's active, no. It's but it's not doing anything. Oh wait, trigger means you step on it, not close, open or close. Okay. How how does <laughs> I actually forgot this go is all. So let's let's see what the lever does is going to tell us what to do oh shit it's actually okay it's embedded on lever um uh, what do we do about this well I say Um, let's factor this out. Uh, wait, no, come to think, I can just call this, right? All I care about is this, this thing here. It's all I care about. I also care about the sound because we want there to be a clicking sound or not. No, no, let's not include the clicking sound. It's fine. We're fine. We're fine. We only need that. So we're not going to factor out all the code and take precious time to do that. Uh, yeah, I am deactivated. The trigger is special animation. And my 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 default animation is going to be there. Yeah, it's fine. This sounds fine. Now we need some uh, uh, um, wait uh, about the rumble. The rumble wasn't working. Yeah, this this is too short. Maybe we need you know a four. Uh, let, let's use a, a tweaker. So I can show you my fancy tweaker. Uh, uh, idle rumble duration tweak idle rumble duration. Let's say it's uh, yeah something like this. Okay. The tweaker is something I use to we use to tree to to modify variables in runtime. Okay, that was not the animation we wanted, but we're close. Okay, these traps are very confused. They are also not open. So what's happening here? Uh, wait, this is activated. That's one problem. Also, the spikes are not deactivating. Spikes are activating. 
Wait, do I have an animation for that to open them up again? I don't think I do. So we'll we'll need to do that as well. That's okay. Okay. Um, okay, this is fine. Spikes activating. Have slot and all. So, wait, I already have this. What's going on here? Oh, wait, I already had that. Okay, why didn't I see it? Okay, now this should fix it. Okay. Okay. Now it's more like it. Okay. Uh Okay, this should probably not activate if we already walked on top of them because it's confused visually confusing, doesn't change anything, but it's visually confusing. Uh what else? Okay, we're saying that we are lacking some spiders here. And we also wanted the fanatics not to be so annoying, right? One thing we could do about the spiders is group them differently. Let's 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 use less and tell them to group themselves in groups of one. Let's see how that works. Uh, this is not going to prevent the stupid fanatics from bunching up together, but we can do something about that later. Okay, those spiders now, or there's too few spiders now. And I really don't like the fanatics to be so keen on getting bunching up together. That's not working out. Let's see. What's going on with Ko? He dislikes corners. That's fine. Uh, he needs to have a lead one, at least one free space so he can be boxed out. Uh, he had. He wants to have at least one monster right next to him, and this is a problem. Because there's so many fanatics that he's going to try to uh, um, bunch up with other fanatics. Uh, what do we do about this? Because we really don't want it to happen that the fanatic is just, you know, standing alone in the level because he's tree built then to defeat. So I think we're going to need a different function for these guys. But for now let's let's just hack it. I'll I'll clean it up afterwards. Okay, uh this is more like it. This is looking more like the part. Okay, what about what if we really want to max out XP on this level? Let's let's try that. This is the second level, so you should not uh, have level up, or maybe just just barely level up, or or you only leveled up once. So let's play out with just one heart for now. this is pretty this is not going to work out wait 
wait uh, I did the traps in reverse guys I did the traps I reversed the thing it's uh Okay, now look at this. I have no chance of getting out of here. But this is a lot of XP. Maybe it's not even enough XP. Like I'm going to ignore it and try to max out without it and see what happens. Yeah, that was not a very good move. So it's 34, which is not great. Let's try something else. Okay, 45. Without grabbing the mask is fine. I mean, it's, it's a sort of a high-ish number to get in this level for the amount of work I put into it, but I mean, it's alright. It's not that bad. It's not like I'm getting a hundred or something. Maybe I could use a little less fanatic in this level. Let's do that. A little less fanatic, about 10. Uh, I, was, I was sort of hoping this would be quicker than it actually is. Uh, so I could answer questions for a long time, but man, deciding games and making games takes a long time. And you know, I was I was expecting to be finished in an hour, uh, and it's been an hour already. And if my numbers reflect my predictions of how long it takes me to make games, it's probably going to be at least half another half an hour, but maybe not. So. I don't like how this game, this particular level looks like. Everything is bunched up here on this side. Uh, but there's not much I can do about that. Uh, the reason why this sort of thing is happening is because uh, I never designed a level that required so many fanatics. Like in this case, they're all bunched up on the left side. I, I should probably do something about this. But it's going to take me a while now, so we'll leave it for later. That was poor. This was a poor run. Let's try to do better than this. travel down there Oh 
Okay, this this feels this feels okay. Uh Yeah, this is fine. I mean, ignoring the mask completely makes me about 45. Let's see if I go for the mask without worrying too much. Damn it. Just bomb you. No, wait. I don't want to use bomb. Bye. Well, I mean, I got a lot of XP out of this. I mean, it's still poor, but I was expecting. I was expecting to make less XP by ignoring everything. How about I do both? Let's see what the difference is. I mean, I could keep I'm not trying to I'm not trying to optimize to the top, to the max here. I'm not, I'm not trying for that. Ah. I just want to do a, an okay job. Okay, you know. Ah, this spider. Well, anyway, I just bomb it. So it's 50 if I try to get both, which is fine, which is very good. I mean, I am fine with that number. Which means if I work harder, I could probably get about 55 or 60. Um, well, one thing I really want is uh, this, the tile on, in front of the idol to be empty. So uh, uh, just just for dramatic for dramatic purpose. So let's block that out. I am going to put a placeholder right in front of it. Uh, it's in the center. And to move it here so it's clear where it is. Uh, so I think I'm going to need to work harder on the to make another version of the fanatic placement algorithm so that they don't bunch up. I mean, some bunching is fine, but I already can see like three groups are bunched up, which is not, it's not nice. It doesn't feel very good. I mean, the space out spiders feel fine. Oh wait, this is an opportunity for a triple there, right there. Uh, So the thing is, I mean, the, the, the goal of level, of having some level of dramaticness, like suddenly level is just a, just a huge hazard. Uh, I like this. I like how this is working. So uh, this feels like a level I want to keep. I just want to make sure the distribution of uh, fanatics is not so... Uh, that they aren't so bunched up, that doesn't feel very good. Uh, and I also think the gem here, I don't want it to be anywhere in this case. I think I want it to, you know, populate the corners because the corners are kind of empty. So let's make it choose one corner and stick it there. Uh, let's make it fixed. 
on the top and just pick a ball if it's true it's it's zero it's left and if it's false it's a right um, Oh wow, wait, no, that's not what I want. That's not what I want, I want a jam. Okay. Um, I think I'm fine with this. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not going to push it up to Steam until I sort out this bunching up question thing but I think I'm going to keep this level I mean this level feels feels like different experience you have in Fidel it doesn't feel like any other level in the game now let's see how it works with the rest of the dogs I mean this this is nice because uh, the these dogs want coins to make progress and the only coins in this level are in the mask so this dog really wants to get that mask uh, it's the only choice for him actually I'm thinking, how about how about we also blow up all the medkits in the level? Would that be too too asshole? Uh, I don't know. Let's 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 figure that out. Maybe maybe it's fine. Maybe we're gonna do that. Uh, whenever you snatch the idols, I kill all the medkits. Um. Yeah, let's let's try that and see how it goes. Get me all the living actors, and if it's a medikit, or a, the robot medikit, it's not the same same thing. Uh, then we kill them. Uh, we need to. Uh, we're going to need to compress this because I'm the leading actor here. Uh, Okay. Uh, no, wait. What we want is to destroy them. So we get a uh, nice scorch on the ground and stuff. Oh, uh, yeah. Sure. Sure program. Sure programming language. I'm going to specify what I want you to iterate. Let's see. How about that? Now this is a hazard. Now this is a hazard. Now whenever you grab the idol, you really want to run for it. There's not much to extract from level at this point. Uh, so you want to leave the idol for last, which is what I wanted. Um, okay, I like this. I think the robot dog is going to like this. Let's see how about uh, the zombie dog. Oh, oh right. There's fire for this dog as well. I mean, this dog is screwed up. He's really screwed unless he... Well, he can get a bunch of XP out of eating these guys. But then this moment is really like... I really need to do something to deep here well he can always use the worms I guess right can he can he even use the worms I 
I don't think he can. I mean, not in this situation. Spiders are too, just too far apart. People are going to hate me for this level, playing this dog. Well, man, I don't know. You will have to figure out. You will have to figure out how to do it. There's maybe too many fires in here for this dog. Anyway, I, I will probably, I will probably play this a bit more with this dog and see if it's impossible or, or not. All right, we have a first working version of this level, so let's uh, do a quick cleanup because we were a bit hacky here. So first of all, we restore the old first levels, and now we do a new, uh, a new template. Underworld uh, idle level and the turtles. Now you get to the generator gets to pick. Ah between these two. Let's see what this looks like in the I know we, we need to revert something with it on the Okay. So campaign, yeah, we change how the second level is produced. Yes, 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 this is our level, this is fine. Yes, we added a bunch of sprite. This is fine. This is fine as well. This is not fine because this is going to break what's already in the game. So we're going to revert this. And I'm going to write down uh, uh, I'm going to write this down uh, So I don't forget about it. And then we did the idol, the fanatic losing his mask. Oh, we reduced the frame rate. I don't want that in the game. I only did it for the stream, so go away. So yeah, lost mask. We added the idol, the pedestal, the seriously startled functionality for the fanatic this if is doing something that we don't need to do anymore see because it says it's not seriously startled but uh yeah i, I better not fuck with this it's fine this is safe to check it's probably redundant but it's fine uh yeah we set the animation we taught the spike floor to open up when there's a idle activated. The idle just gives you a bunch of stuff and destroys the medikits. Uh, the pedestal just starts rumble. Did we like? Oh, I didn't show you rumble. Let's 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 take a look at that. So we had a wait. Ah, right now now we are in a. Okay. Okay, that rumble feel, feels fine to me. But if we wanted to make it last longer, we could come here and say, well, maybe it should last for a second. But, you know, it doesn't feel that good. I mean, and too short is too short. Maybe it's fine. Maybe this is fine. About 20. No, too short. Something is going on with the animations here. Some guys playing an animation are taking some time to transform. We have to fix that. Oh, the rumble duration with 0.25 seems fine. So I go to rumble duration. 25 is fine. Uh, let's see what's going on about those fanatics lagging behind. What's happening is that when we are starting this animation, we're not stopping the old animations. We need to stop everything that was going on before this. So let's do that. Stop special animations. Stop 
concurrent animations stop rare idols this thing let's see this should prevent anything that was running any special thing that was running on this thing to stop Now that's more like you are not lagging behind. Those particles are taking too long now. I think those particles should be shorter. Uh, they should last maybe half of what they last. Maybe like this. Oh. No, it's still like it's still like lasting too long. Still lasting too long, man. Still lasting too long. This is more like it. They're also going very far. Let's reduce the force there. A little less. Yeah. Now they seem to be taking too long to go away. Let's reduce this. more no that's ugly that was ugly I think three is fine okay this is fine this is all right uh, I never bother implementing a way to dump this back into the into a file or something so uh, force is 200 Duration uh, two three variance eighteen. Okay, yeah, this is okay. I mean, this. Maybe they should go up instead of. Uh, Let's reduce the angle variance. Well, let's give something. So that there's a cone. Now we can add a bit more force. Yeah, I think this is this is the way, guys. I'm not sure I like that bounce very much. Um, now they're lasting too long again. Yeah, this is this is better. Let's increase the radius, the starting radius, so it grabs more of the sprite. A bit more. Yes, that feels much better. Now that's that is better. Uh, okay, directional uh, force three hundred twelve. The nice thing about writing these numbers down by hand is that I get to I get to put really nice numbers instead of ugly floats. Angle angle variance fifty eight. Uh, 58. Uh, duration 1.9. Yeah, that's that's fine. And no bounce frequency. Let's see if things are the way we expect them to be. 
yeah this is fine I mean we I could probably just tune it a bit more but this is fine for now uh, okay so what we did we do here ah uh, uh, yeah the spike floor the idol the pedestal the particles for the fanatic this is fine uh, I'm just I usually type in Spanish but I'll just do it in English since we're at it it's like first version of the second of uh, the idle level for the underworld improved fanatic mask explosion uh, integrated new graphics for idle and fanatic walking and and unmasked fanatic uh, what else was there I mean I think this is, this is okay okay let's commit it push it up and then we're done okay uh, I sort of wish we could uh, release uh, the game on Steam but I, I want to tweak it a bit before that so maybe I'll do this again some other time and we, you can get to see how we upload it to Steam and you know up the version and all that kind of stuff for now uh, if you have any questions this is the this is the um, uh, this is the time to do them if you want to ask me questions about anything in the game or whatever meanwhile I'll take a look at the code with fanatic to see what I'm going to do about it um, so I'm going to duplicate this and use it as basis for the idle fanatics So, this likes corners is fine, at least once free space, so field can back stuff without waking up. Uh, yeah, this is fine. I kind of don't want to have too many um, At least one monster right next to me. Well, how about we relax that as well? See what this does. Okay, questions. Um, has version 2.0 uh, gotten me a nice bump in sales? Well, it did get us a bump. Uh, given that we didn't sell that much in the first place it's not really a significant bump uh, we probably made about uh, 160 units this past week which is pretty much almost nothing but given that we were selling a lot less than that every week I mean it was a bump um, yeah, it's hard for indie games today. Question. When elements are added using add random, how do you make sure the levels are always solvable? I don't. I don't guarantee that the levels are solvable except in specific cases like the puzzle levels or the chess level. Other, other than that, I don't guarantee solvability uh, in the levels. The thing is... Uh, I'm counting on you to be clever, first of all, and to uh, and I give you shop items and I allow you to switch gates in order to mitigate the risk that there's a level that you can get out of. So far, I haven't found a single case. I'm sure you can eventually find one, but so far I haven't seen a single case in which you lock yourself out and you cannot make progress in the game unless it's a late level game and you haven't been getting a lot of XP. I mean, if you were playing badly, you might get stuck, but that's part of the design. I don't need to guarantee that you're going to get out of it. Um, another question. Did you make a level editor in Fidel like you did in Ernesto? If no, why? No, I did not need an editor for this level because it's simple enough for this game, because it's simple enough that I don't need it. 
in levels that you know require a lot of you know hand moving things around i did i did this uh let me see it's sewer sewer i did this in which you know it's a bunch of text and i just spawn things based on this small matrix here so in handmade levels i do this otherwise you know levels are so simple that you i don't need an editor for this that said there are debugging tools in the game um like I can I can use these to jump into a different level. There's a tweaker in which I can tune dif different things uh, into in, in the game. Uh, I mean, many many variables are handled by by this tweaker. I have a lot of debug things I can do. I can go to the credit screen. I can trigger the ghost. I can reset the save game. Uh, there's also a sound log where I can you know debug what's happening with the sound. So there are uh, debugger and edition tools in the game but not like a full-on game editor was this your first hacks project how do you like it no this was not my hacks, first hacks project i've been programming in hacks for probably five years now uh i made small game small games i made storyteller in it i made the older version of ernesto in it uh so i'm pretty used to it and I really like the language. I think it's a very good language. Uh, I'm just, uh, it's just that, you know, it. the problem with hacks, with using hacks, is that uh, it's the underlying platform that you choose. I'm choosing, I chose uh, Adobe Air for this game, which has a lot of limitations and some good things. Uh, so I should start switching to OpenFL or something like that if you really wanted to, you know, move forward, especially now that Adobe has announced that uh, they're not going to maintain Flash anymore. So I, I can keep staying here, but I don't know if my next project is going to be with hacks. Probably not. Have I streamed before? Because I like to see. I I have streamed before. I have streamed level design before. For Ernesto, you can find probably something in the history or something on my YouTube channel or something, uh, where we did puzzle game design uh, live. Um, I mean, these these streams are hard to make because I am. Uh, trying to think creatively what I'm talking and it's it's really uh, screws my brain up uh, are the chess levels always solvable without bombs if so what does also true before 2.1 no uh, I mean the, the chess levels now are always solvable and you need to solve them perfectly in that you need to get all the pieces before uh, you can move on but that only happened two days ago when I uploaded a new version of the game uh, which in which I could actually sit down to think about it and come up with a solution that allowed me to do that before that they were not guaranteed to be solvable fully solvable I mean most i mean almost they almost always were but it was easy to find a level a level in which you could not perfect it i mean you could not always you know skip it ahead but you could not perfect it now with the latest version that i uploaded yesterday you can um uh, why gold chests now appear always open i mean they're n they don't appear always open now i don't think Unless something broke. Let's see about that. I mean, stuff breaks, so it's perfectly feasible that that's the case. It may happen that in the underworld, I don't, f I don't, I don't put, uh, I don't put mimics like regular mimics on the underworld. I think, because at that point, I'm not going to. I, yeah, yeah, I, it's not the game you're playing anymore. Um, let me reset the game. Uh well i think they are close man it's just that not in the underworld anymore they are not uh yeah send me a screenshot if you saw that in the regular game that would be worrisome okay guys any more questions you can ask me about anything i'm going to ask answer questions about anything I'm pretty flexible so 
What's going on about this? I don't fanatic. I don't fanatic. I should probably start wiring this up into the main game. Generating levels. Generating levels. Let's make it super hockey for now. Super hockey, super hockey, hockey fanatics. If I am in the level with the idol, idol, um, let's let's signal the game that we are in level with an idol. I'm doing this while I wait for you guys to come up with questions. Uh, where am I? Okay. Fanatic. If I am in level with uh, his weasel, what's um, um, level? Side. Um, let's see what this does. What this does? Now I'm not in the underworld anymore. Uh, Okay, this does not necessarily feel a lot better. So I should allow a few fanatics to connect, probably. Okay, so we'll need to be more lenient with that. Questions, questions. Was Fidel an indie fan game? Yes, uh, indie fan funded, uh, actually funded Ernesto, my previous game. Let me show you Ernesto. Ernesto, you're going to rec if you, if you never heard of this game, you're going to recognize some of the mechanics. Uh, they actually funded this game, and when we started making uh, Fidel as a spin-off of this game, they moved the financing over to Fidel. So yeah, Fidel is an indie funded game. Indie fund, for those who don't know, are uh, uh, investors, like are, are indie developers that did well and are uh, investing, giving money to fund game, independent games. Uh, they are capital investors and they chose Fidel or Ernesto to fund. Um, what are my plans? Uh, Matt says, what are your plans going forward, both for Fidel and with other projects? Well, well, Fidel is pretty much over now. I'm going to keep, you know, uh, doing small stuff. For, I mean, I'm going to keep maintaining it. But given that it was, it did not explode, uh, it's not financially sound for us to keep working on it. So uh, we're probably going to stop. And uh, we are going to announce a new thing probably in a couple of months. Uh, it's not exactly new, but um, uh, it's not something people expect us to do. But yeah, we're going to have some news soon. What sort of communities exist for those interested in puzzle design? Well. Community, I, I wouldn't, I don't know if there's a puzzle community, but there's, I mean, people uh, who make puzzle games uh, like Stephen Lavelle uh, with Saucy, Stephen Sausage Roll or um, 
Alan Hazelden uh, with uh, Cosmic X Express and uh, Snow Mice Hard to Hard to Build, and and um, you know we we sort of know each other, uh, but I don't know if there's a puzzle design community. Yeah. Often I talk to them because I mean I highly respect them as as puzzle designers. So whenever I, and as designers in general, so I sometimes I go to them for advice because they're uh, they're very good designers. Am I using any library like Flixer or Flashbang? No, I'm not. I'm just uh, doing my own thing. I uh, in fact, I'm just, I mean, Fidel is uh, running on top of a, of the GPU and I'm doing the GPU programming myself in hacks. Let me show you something that you're going to find sort of hilarious. Um, GPU shaders, what is shaders? I'm writing, I'm writing my own shaders in shader assembly language. <laughs> I mean, this is terrible, guys. Never do this, but it's. Uh, I mean, it's. It, it was the easiest way for me to um, program the way I want to program and still, you know, uh, uh, get things done. So yeah, this is fun. Debugging these are fine. Uh. What's my favorite games? I don't have a favorite game. I my favorite game moves on. Uh, my favorite game moves on as as I you know I play games. I play new games. I don't have a favorite game that I think that you could say this is my favorite game of all time or anything like that. Uh, like I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean I've been playing Skyrim. I like that game. I don't think it's my favorite game. But it's I like playing it. Uh, and I played a lot of hours on it, so I guess uh, I guess it's a sort of favorite game or something. Uh, as for independent game, let me see. Let me cheat. Okay, well, Windows is not being responsive to me right now. Uh, and go to Steam, and we'll see about that. Meanwhile, I'll, I'll ask other questions. Uh, how, do you know when you will resume development of Ernesto? I guess Ernesto is a bigger complex game than Fidel, right? I don't know if it's a lot more complex. I would say it's bigger-ish in terms of how it feels, but I don't think it's more complex than Fidel. And there's going to be news about that as well soon. Uh, install, install games. Oh wow, Steam is really slow today. What have I been playing lately? Well, I played a ton of Into the Breach. This game is awesome. That game is great. Absolutely great. What else have I been, have been playing lately? I've been playing a bit of Shadow Hand. It's a solitaire game. It's just, it's just to turn off the brain, but it worked well for me. I really like this game, Was Hack. It's like, it's what. It's like an experience like playing NetHack, but it's 3D, like a side-scroller side thing. Uh, I, I like this game. Uh, Unexplorer uh, is a good game as well. And it also didn't do very very well, like us. And it's a great roguelike kind of game. Uh, well, we've been playing Dead Cells, we've been playing Hit Signature. His signature, it was, it was a good game to play for a few hours. I enjoyed those few hours I spent with the game. Uh, anyway. Does Fidel look or play a lot differently than your initial pro prototype of the game? Well, actually the first prototype of Fidel uh, is this game that I make a few years ago? Look at this prototype, man. This is this is some prototype.
look at this. This is a prototype of Fidel. Uh, then we turn to make this game, which is more of a puzzle thing. And then Fidel went back to the origins and as for prototypes, I think I should have one prototype right here. Uh, uh, I wonder if it's going to run. Going to, is it even going to run at all? Yeah. Come on, just open it. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Just let me run it here. Here's another prototype. Uh, there should be another prototype around here somewhere. Uh, maybe I just just deleted it. That could be. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I mean, I have I have a few. If I look for them, I can probably ha find it. Oh, this is this a game. Let me see. This game here. Oh, look! I made this game a few months ago, and I never shipped it. Uh, and I'm never going to ship it probably, but it was fun to make. I made it in a month or so. Anyway. Uh, did I finish Stephen Sausage Roll? No, I got stuck. Uh, I got stuck in a. I got stuck like probably at the beginning of the game, right after the stack of sausages. Uh, I still think the game is. Is, just it's just pure gold, but the guy what 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 Stephen did was amazing with that game. Question: Was there any piece of code in Fidel that was particularly tough? Guessing that shader code. No, the shader code was fine. That was fine. That, that, that was that was relatively easy to do. I think the hardest piece of code in Fidel was the solver, the the logic that solves the levels, because I'm running in a technology that's very slow, so I had to optimize the hell out of it. I mean, this piece of code you're looking at here is optimized like crazy, and I had to reprogram all the logic of the game because I could not reuse logic that I used for the main game because it's too slow. So I ended up. Uh, like replicating all the logic in a very tight way, this code all compiles up to a single function. There are no function calls. There's no memory allocations. And I, you know, the level of optimization is that I, if I, if I manage to shave off an if, it could mean like a second of processing on the solver. So yeah, it's uh, this piece of code was tough to to write. Uh, do you do the art and music for Fidel? No, the art is made by uh, Jeremias Babini, which is he's great, and the music is made by er, er, Hernan, who this is Jeremias and Hernan, who is uh, writes music for me. Question. I see my. Uh, see your game has very good reviews online, especially side, and is mentioned very often by the other successful developers. Channel blow, but it seems the sites are not cohering with that. Do you have any theory about what this is? Is may maybe because of the game gender? Uh, well, um, I have a theory of what's going on on Steam. Uh, first of all, uh, it's clear that. Uh, like getting good reviews on the press is not does not generate sales. I mean, getting getting featured by a review site and all that is not enough to. Uh, they don't even they just produce a very tiny spike. They're not decisive to how the game is going to do. Uh, apparently, the our, their outreach is not that big. Uh, 
and you know my Twitter space, every in my Twitter sphere, everyone the, you know that is close to me, they help me a lot. I mean, they retweet it and push the game a lot everywhere. Uh, road reviews on Steam and uh, and all that. I have a lot of support, uh, but clearly that's not enough to put a game uh, to make a game commercially successful. See, Fidel has sold today uh, probably. Um, 5,200 units or something like that, which is super low. It's not, I mean, it, it was commercial. It's, I mean, we lost money, but it's relatively well for the kind of game it is and how Steam is nowadays. My theory with Steam, if you want to make a game that is commercially uh, successful, is that uh, you either are making a game that is uh, that is a small and a novelty, and you know, people uh, find it you know funny, attractive. Uh, or they seen it, or streamers like it, like uh, getting over it with Ben Foddy or Dream Daddies or you know stuff that you know or Pony Island or whatever. Whatever you know feels like a new experience that uh, uh, it's easy to see what it's trying to do and you know you find it cool. So you either make that kind of game or you make a niche game, like you make a builder game or you make a little bit like a battlegrounds uh, kind of game or make a, 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 a hentai games or whatever uh, niche that are easy, uh, easily identifiable on Steam or you make a hit, which you know you cannot purposefully make a hit. So my theory goes that you better be in one of those three categories if, you, if you're going to make an indie game on Steam, if you want to do well. Uh, uh, what is my native language? Spanish, Castellano. Uh, I'm from Argentina. Argentina is here for all the people that don't know where it is here we are south very south uh, let me see I think you mentioned a couple of puzzles you did for the witness are in the final game. Can you share which ones of these were? Yeah, it is uh, the uh, the witness um, laser quarry. This one. This this panel here. This small panel here. So as simple as you saw it. I have a I have a net. I have a notebook somewhere around here. Uh, I have a notebook. I don't know. If, I don't know if you guys are going to be able to even see this, but uh, I have a notebook. It's full of hundreds of attempts to make this puzzle, uh, and I have having more attempts in another notebook uh so for such a simple puzzle it took me a long time to figure out because there were many constraints about this puzzle like the pieces i should use uh, what the other puzzles look like uh the technical limitations uh i should i should probably i should probably write about it at some point because it was very interesting to develop this this puzzle because uh, I sort of felt like I was really understanding how John did these things. Uh, I'm still amazed he managed to make s to make so many really good puzzles out of this because these things are really hard to make. But uh, as an interesting uh, uh, tidbit is that John did not use an editor to make the panels for this game. He designed everything on a, on a paper notebook with. A with a pen and when I asked him about it he said that uh, when he this I mean he said if I design these puzzles with the computer 
I would end up with very different puzzles. And I did not understand it at the time, but then after working on it some uh, for a bit, I understood that when you sit down and try to design uh, these panels on paper, uh, you are forced to think. Uh, you're forced to think about what idea are you going to start working on because you cannot, you know, try random stuff and see how it works like we just did with Fidel. When you're working on paper, you need to have a clear idea of what you're going to try. Okay, well maybe I'm going to try to put all these symbols on one side and see if a nice puzzle arises or something. But uh, uh, if... Um, sorry. Uh, and see if a good puzzle arises. But you need to start from a clear idea, like all these symbols on one side or... I want to puzzle like that looks like this. You don't you don't design by just throwing stuff at the screen like we just did, and that ends up translating how it feels to play the puzzles. When you play the puzzles, each one of them is about a specific idea that a human had, and so it feels like a communication. And then I understood why John did it on paper. Um, can I command on the choice of framework and language and what that over can engine a lower level language like C? That's a good question. So I don't like, I can program in C and C++, but I don't want to because of several reasons. Uh, most of each, most of, most of which are, you know, just dealing with bullshit from those languages. Uh, like me having to help the compiler figure out the types that I define and even then taking like 10 times as much time to compile as you know as I do with hacks. I mean, I'm compiling the whole game. Every every time I click compile, I compile the whole game with all these resources, and it just takes a few seconds, like two or three seconds. I'm sure if I made this game in C++, the C++ way, I would probably wait even more, like a lot more. Even though I'm hell, I would be helping the compiler do its job. I hate that. And can't engines is that. Every, every, I mean, I'm learning Unity now because for my next project, I will probably be forced to use it. But the thing with engines is that they will fall out. They will, I mean, Unity is going to go, go under at some point. They are going to go under because that's how companies work. And when that happens, all the games made in Unity are going to stop being maintained and it's going to, and all those games are probably going to stop working like it happened with Java, like it happened with uh, 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 um, uh, with Flash. Uh, all those things are going to stop working. All those games are going to be lost in history. And going back back to them and trying to make them work again, yeah, it's going to be a nightmare. So I don't see I don't see that happening. That's on one hand. So we are still making games that we know in a few years are going to be unplayable. And on the other hand, Unity sort of owns your game in a way. Like they could go crazy at some point. That's that's that do something nasty that makes your that forces you to spend money on the game or do something else or whatever. You're you are sort of at the mercy of these companies, which is not good. Uh, so I picked the middle ground solution. I could be a language that I like uh, with a platform that did its job for 2D games. And so I didn't need to go full engine, and I did not go need to go back to C++. Uh, unfortunately, Adobe has announced that they are not going to keep working on Flash, and you know, and this technology that I'm using has its limitations. So I will have to move on. But at some point, I want to go back and program game, uh, games in lower level. Uh, I'm expecting Jonathan Blow to finish his language, and maybe I can make games uh, on that. Is there going to be a hentai Fidel sequel coming? I mean, the artist is seriously considering that. Uh, okay, guys, I think it's 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 getting very late. Uh, I would love to keep an answering questions, but it's very late here. I need to uh, make food and go to sleep. So anyway. Uh, if you have questions, you can uh, come uh, talk to me on Twitter. This is my Twitter handle.